Hi, let's talk about bubble sort. Bubble sort is a simple comparison based algorithm and takes big O of n square time. Bubble sort has multiple passes. In the first pass, we move the largest element to last position, which is its final position. In the second pass, we move the second largest element to the second last position, which is its final position. We keep doing it until all the elements are moved to their correct positions. Let's now see the working. This is the first pass, this is second pass and this is third pass. We have this array we want to sort. So what we do is we compare the adjacent elements beginning from the first element. We compare these two elements and since this element is smaller than this element, we do not do any swapping. We do swapping when the adjacent elements that we are comparing, they are out of order, which means the element that comes before is greater than the element that comes after it. So two is smaller, we do not do any swapping. Now we compare the next adjacent elements and this time they are out of order. 10 comes before it, so we swap these two, right? And after swapping, next time we compare the next two adjacent elements, which are 10 and 7. And since they are again out of order, we swap these two. So after first pass, we have this array and you can notice that 10, the largest element has moved to the last position. It has bubbled up to the last position. So you begin from the first element, compare it with the second element. If they are out of order, you swap them. Then you compare second element to the third element. If they are out of the order, you swap them. Then you compare third and fourth. And if they are out of order, you again swap them. So this is how you ensure your largest element reaches the last position. Now you want to move the second largest element eight to the last position. So we again follow the same concept. We begin with the first two elements, we compare them and if they are out of order, we swap them. They are not out of order here. Two is smaller, eight is greater. Now we compare the next two elements, eight and seven, they are out of order, so we swap them. We stop at this point because there's no point comparing eight and 10 because eight, 10 was the largest element. So we stop our iteration at this point and now our two elements are fixed. So before this point, only 10 was sorted and after this pass, 10 and 8 both are sorted. Now we move to the third pass. In the third pass, we want to ensure 7 is at its correct position. So in the third pass, we just need to compare these two elements. And once we compare these two elements, we decide that they are not out of order. So we keep 7 at its correct position. So our, these three elements are sorted. And once your last n minus 1 elements are sorted, your this element is anyways the smallest element because last n minus elements are not only sorted, they are the largest n minus 1 elements. So we need to do how many passes for n elements? n minus 1 passes. Because in n minus 1 passes, your n minus 1 largest elements will move to last n minus one correct positions and your smallest element, which you want it to be the first position, it will be at the first position. Now, please pause this video and try implementing this algorithm. Let us now talk about implementation of bubble sort. So here is simple implementation. We need to do n minus one passes. So we are running an outer loop from zero to n minus two to have n minus one passes of bubbling. Now this is the code to bubble the largest element to the last position first, then second largest element to the second last position. Now what are we doing in this code? We are running a loop from j equal to zero to n minus two again. Why n minus two? Because we are going to compare array j with array j plus one. So if we use n minus one here, then what will happen? It will go out of the index bound. So we run a loop for j equal to 0 to n minus 2 so that we can compare array j with array j plus 1. When j becomes n minus 2, then you will be comparing n minus 2th element with n minus 1th element, which is the last element. We compare array j and array j plus 1. If they're out of order, we simply swap them. Now, can we optimize this solution further? Because if you take a look at this loop, I am simply running a loop from j equal to 0 to n minus 1 every time for every pass. And as we discussed earlier, after we have run one pass, one element is fixed to the last position, which is the largest element. And after we have run two passes, two elements are fixed at their correct position as last two largest elements. 
So using this fact, can we optimize this loop? The idea of optimization is this. If we are at ith iteration, then i elements are already fixed to their last position and they are i largest elements. So there is no point comparing the current element with those i largest elements. So we run this loop only till the end minus i minus 1. That's the optimization we can make in the earlier implementation. Let's now see the working of this optimized code. So what we have here, i stands for the current pass, right? We are going to have n minus 1 pass. So i is going to vary from 0 to n minus 2. And for this pass, i equal to 0, we are going to run a loop for j equal to 0 to n minus 2. And n is 4 here. So n minus 2 is going to be 2. And for every j, we compare array j with array j plus 1. And if they are out of order, we swap them. So when j is equal to 0, we compare 0 and 1. They are out of order, we swap them. Now when we are j equal to 1, we compare 1 and 2 index elements. They are already in order, so we do not swap them. Now for j equal to 2, we compare this and this element, index 2 and index 3. They are out of order, so we swap them. And this is what happens after the first pass. You can notice that after first pass, your largest element moves to the end. This element is fixed at its correct position. So in the next pass, we need to run loop only from here to here, right? We need to only consider these three elements. So our loop runs from j equal to 0 to j equal to 1. And when you run for j equal to 1, you are anyways going to consider this element, right? So that's how our internal loop decision is made. So we uh, run for j equal to 0. When we run for j equal to 0, we compare these two elements. They are in order, so we do not make any change. So when we run for j equal to 1, these two elements are out of order, so we swap them, right? And we get this array after the second pass. And you can notice that these two elements are sorted. Now we just need to fix these two elements. And to fix these two elements, we need to run the loop only once, right? Because these two elements will be compared only in one loop. So we compare these two elements in the next pass and they are out of order, so we swap them. And this is our final pass. After this pass, we have this array sorted. Let us analyze time complexity of bubble sort. This statement is the statement that executes maximum number of times. For i equal to zero, this statement is going to run n minus one times. When i is zero, this statement, this expression is going to be n minus one. So this loop is going to run from zero to n minus two, and which means it's going to run n minus one times. And for i equal to 1, we have n minus 2 here. So this statement is going to run n minus 2 times. For i equal to 2, it's going to run n minus 3 times. So this is how the statement is going to run for different values of i. i equal to 0, i equal to 1, and when i is n minus 2. And sum of the series is n into n minus 1 by 2. So the time complexity of this implementation is theta n square. Now, can we optimize the solution? especially for the cases when your array is sorted. Because if you take a look at this particular implementation, it's always taking n square time. Can you optimize it so that if your array is sorted or if your array becomes sorted in the middle, it does not do any more work. Let us now see the optimized implementation. In this implementation, we are maintaining a swapped variable. What we do is, we initialize swapped variable as false after every iteration, after every pass. And for the current pass, we check if any swapping happened or not. If any swapping happened, then we make the swapped variable as true. And if swapped variable remains false, it means no swapping happened. And while we were comparing the adjacent elements, we did not find any, element, any pair of elements out of order, which means your array is sorted. It has become sorted or it was already sorted. So you need not to proceed further. You can stop here and return from this code. Let's now understand this with an example. Here we have a sorted array. So when you run it for the first pass, when i is 0, you run the loop for j equal to 0 to 3, right? And inside this loop, you when you are j equal to 0, you compare these two elements. They are in order, so you will not do any swapping. Your swap will remain false. Again, swap will remain false. Again, swap will remain false. Again, swap will remain false. Swap will remain false in all the iterations because 
you will never do a swapping. And if swapped remains false, you will come out of this whole function, you will break the loop and you are done with the sorting. So if your array is sorted, you can notice that we are running a loop only from 0 to n minus 2, right? 0 to 3, which means it does linear work. So the swapped variable, it enhances the performance, especially in the cases when your array is sorted or almost sorted or it becomes sorted in the middle. It does not take any square time in all the cases. Let's now talk about stability in bubble sort. Bubble sort is a stable sorting algorithm. If you have two items with same value, it never changes their original positions. In this example, I have taken three items with same value, 666, and we are going to see that these three sixes remain in the same order as they were earlier. So this is six number one, this is six number two, this is six number three. And they are going to remain as it is here. See bubble sort, how will it work? It will compare these two elements first. They are in order, then it will compare these two elements. They are in order, then it is going to compare these two elements. They are not in order, it's going to swap them. It does the swapping only when the previous element is smaller. There's no equal to sign. So it does swapping of adjacent elements and that is only done when you have greater element on the left side and smaller element on the right side, not equal. So this is what happens after the first pass. Now when you come to second pass, these two sixes, they are same. So they are not swapped. These two sixes, they are again same, not swapped, right? And we stop our bubble sort here because we did not do any swapping in this pass. We have a swapped variable. So we can notice that Bubble sort algorithm never changes order of equal elements. So bubble sort is stable and it also in place because it does not require any extra array to copy the original elements. It modifies the elements within the array only.